Hello, dear friends. This is wonderful to be here again and to be in, able to get on the internet to talk with you. I'm so glad. You know, Jack and I have been sequestered here and now we're loving it. Well, most of the time doing some things that we haven't been able to do before and just spending time with each other and with the Lord and on the internet with friends. So I welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. I welcome you. I got some exciting things because I've had extra time alone with the Lord. And um, on the internet, looking up things with Sid Roth and some other good things. So I am thrilled to be able to be here. I thank God for the internet. And I see big crowds coming in, or well, whatever country you are from. I welcome you. I welcome you. Say, welcome. We're going to study the word. And Jesus is here. And my father is here watching over us. And I thank you, Jesus. So I thank you, Jesus, right now um, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ of you, that the eyes of my heart are open. I know the hope of my calling and the, everybody who's listening to me does know that too. Oh, and you're, oh, oh I just remember about the father of glory Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that we have an inheritance in you, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, a great inheritance and the great power that you have given us, the same power that you used when you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And um, that you've given that to us. This is in first uh, Ephesians 1. And uh, what did I pass? What is the surpassing greatness of your power to us who believe? And um, which is wrought about in Jesus when you raised him and put him at your right hand in heavenly places. Welcome, dear friends, Jack and Emily and whoever else is coming in. Welcome. Oh, I send my love to you and God's love and this word, this word, this word. I couldn't live without it. I couldn't live without Jesus. So security I'm going to be talking about, but I got some other exciting things because I've had extra time on the internet to look up what other people are saying. And of course, I need to check it out with God. Hello, Jack Landis. Yes, yes. Welcome, welcome. Um, other things, other prophets are saying, you know, we have to be discerning too, don't we? And we love to listen to the prophets, but it has to agree with our spirit. You know, my sheep hear my voice is what, what Jesus said. I am his sheep. You are his sheep. So I just uh, submit this to God Almighty and say, whatever I pass on today, maybe you check it out in the word, but we have the word, word, word. I love it. And like I say, I've had more time alone. But I want to start in the book of Haggai. Maybe you've, your pastor has been talking about that too. Haggai, because things are shaking and it was predicted in the book of Haggai, wasn't it? Haggai 2. I've got the New American Standard Version, but it's, it's nice to check other versions too. Haggai 2, verse 5. He has talked about, um, as for the promise which I made you when you came out of Egypt, this is God speaking to his people there. Haggai was written maybe about 600 years before Christ, or maybe no, 400, uh, somewhere around there, long ago. My spirit is abiding in your midst. Do not fear. Do not fear, uh, because that's what the devil wants you to do now with this virus, and that is one of his main tools he wants to use. We're in a spiritual battle. You know that, don't you? Yes, we're in a spiritual. But we are winning. We are winning because we have the blood of Jesus. We are born from above. And um, like I just read there, we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, because Jesus paid the price for us to go with him and seated with him. He raised us for by grace we've been raised from the dead and seated with him in heavenly places. That's um, Ephesians 2. 
Uh, let's see, by the power of the age, let's see. Uh, but God, being rich in his mercy, wherewith he greatly loved us, raised us up together with his son, Jesus Christ, and during the re resurrection, or after the resurrection. But we are seated with him. Hallelujah. What a glorious privilege that we are seated with him in heavenly places, in heavenly places. And we can listen Oh, we can watch, we can watch, we can see. Oh, and this virus is under our feet. It's by his grace and by his mercy. We're going to pass this test. We're not going to be discouraged. We're going to have a security, is what my title is, security in the name of Jesus. But like I said, in Haggai 2, everything is shaking. Every nation, we've had phone calls or whatever, uh, let's see, emails from, uh, let's see, from India. Now they are on lockdown too. And one of our teachers and our directors over there is, is doing live on Facebook in Oh, let's see, Haiti, we have a man there that needed some more money, and um, he was. In, they were on lockdown there. In India, they, they need, because uh, they're on lockdown too, they needed some money, so we were, by the grace of God, we were able to send them some. And then I got to think today, a man in um, uh, Kenya wanted to be my friend, and I thought, oh, yes, I remember. Kenya, yes, I was there, and Jack was there in 2009, so if the pastor, no, I think he's sleeping now, he'll catch me later, in the uh, city of Kisi, Kenya, and, um, but God is good, but they're shaking, those nations, every nation is shaking, California is shaking, uh, oh, thank God we don't have as much problem as New York, but uh, by the grace of God, um, God is protecting us, and we know our authority, and we know his mercy is great, his mercy is great, we are careful, but God is shaking, he said, Haggai 2 verse 6, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, once more in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, uh, the sea also on the dry land. I will shake all nations and they will come with a wealth of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Now, some of you may be worried about the money. If you're in a business or something like that and your money is, is run dry and you're waiting for the government to help you, I want to say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You talk about the lilies of the field. They don't strive and the birds don't strive, but they, God gives them food and he gives them, oh, they're, they're beautiful. So um, I would just say at the beginning, don't worry about that money. You have sown, I believe. You have sown and you've given and it's given unto you, pressed down and running over. If, uh, and I believe you've sown. So I thank you, Lord. He's shaking it. But he said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. And back in verse 7, he said, I will fill this house with glory. Now, he was speaking to those people at that time because they were rebuilding the temple there and they had uh, stopped um, because their first temple was destroyed, wasn't it? They were going to fill it. He's, they're building another temple. But I want to say uh, on verse 9, I'll apply it for today. The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former because they were thinking about the former house. Solomon's temple was so gorgeous. Oh, Okay. Uh, well, in 70 AD, who is it the name? The man came in and destroyed that temple there. And so they're building another one. Greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace. So I want to go into that now, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because this is this is more important than a physical building. Yes, I miss going to see my friends at church and the presence of God and the music. And, oh, it's wonderful. But I am the temple. He has chosen me and you to be his temple, to live in us. Uh, let's see, in 2 Corinthians 6.16, talking about the temple, 
Uh, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Second Corinthians 6 verse 16. Oh, he said he would dwell in us. We would be his temple. So we are now, and there's going to be glory. I'm believing I'm going to get in some, some prophecies that I read about that great things are going to happen. As soon as we get out of this lockdown, and even even while we're in it, that's why I'm, I count it a privilege that I can talk to you and share the good things that God has in store, because you went through the Passover. I know you you celebrated that, uh, the, the communion and celebrated and put the blood on your doorpost and on the doorpost of your heart. And we looked for the leaven in our house, didn't we? And in, in this temple here, we looked, oh, Lord, is there any leaven? You know, because we had to be clean. And uh, we still have to, it's not just a one-time thing. It's every time, every day, oh, Lord, I don't like this pride. It comes up and comes rearing his head every once in a while. But, Lord, I thank you. I have an advocate. And God uh, is watching over me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I welcome more guests here. Okay, we are the temple of the living God. He said he'd live in us, and I will be his God. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And then we have it in Colossians 1, 27 and 28, or 27. To whom God, he's talking about a mystery. It was let, hidden for centuries. They didn't know this in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, because the Gentiles weren't allowed into that tabernacle. They weren't allowed. Oh, some of them came along when they left uh, Egypt, but they had to be, obey everything that the Jews had to obey. They had to get circumcised. They had to follow everything, all of those laws. But wow, we are in a new covenant. But we know this mystery. It's written in the word Christ in us. Oh, the Egyptians had have, have no idea of God in them. They were worshiping all those diet, idols, but they were defeated, weren't they? Okay, but I said in Ephesians 2, I read that just before. God being rich in his mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. And when we receive Jesus as our Savior, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, um, he came to dwell in us. By his grace, 1 Corinthians 1, I think it's 30, but by um, the wisdom of God, we are, by God's mercy, we are put into Jesus Christ. We have the wisdom, wisdom from God. He adopted us. He put us into Christ Jesus and, and for redemption, sanctification, and oh, what a righteousness, a gift of righteousness given to us. Oh, the word, that's what is so much uh, better now <laughs> that I have more time. I don't have this pressure. Oh, I got to go here. I got to go there. I, I you know, I got to get these groceries. I had to figure out some new recipes to do what uh, things with what I have at the house. I've done that before. You probably have too. And when we lived in the jungle, we had to uh, scrape and believe, hey, this is fine. This will this'll, this'll do. It'll be nutritious. Okay, so I said, we are seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that said, this is Ephesians 2, 7 now. So that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. We have this word, don't we? This love letter from Jesus. This love letter from Jesus. Oh, surpassing riches of his grace. And then in Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 22, he put all things in subjection under his feet, that's Jesus, and gave him as head over all things to the church. Head over all things. So uh, this virus is under our feet. But you know, friends, this is an assignment from the enemy. I'm sure you know that by now. <laughs> 
Um, because in America, I might even get a little bit political here. We thank God for our president. You know, if you're from another country and you're onto um, other news, CNN, a lot of those just paint the, the bad picture, the lies. I would say don't listen to those other channels. The only one I can recommend is Fox. And then we have Fox Channel, and then we get OAN. Those are conservative. But I want to say, um, I'm going to mention these things about our president because we pray for him. And you can do that too because the world is looking at America. It's looking at President Trump. He is God's man. He is not perfect, but he's the Cyrus. The God's man is a wrecking ball. Oh, to get out a bunch of the wickedness and we're all oh, discovering more, <laughs> more and more wickedness. And then the, But the Lord looks to the church first. He looks to me first. How can I condemn someone? someone else when I've got this pride or this judgmental spirit in me and I say God help me how I need help oh so that virus is under our feet uh, we do believe it came from China and uh, we're going to discover more things about that and um, that we're, we do have victory over that we're not to be in fear because that's what the devil wants to use that virus and put us in fear. But yet I need to obey the government um, because Jack and I are older. We shouldn't go out. Our children are getting the groceries for us. And that's been maybe five weeks. And I went out and snuck out. Well, I was legally <laughs> like at 630 in the morning with my mask and all of that. And um, But I'm not afraid. But the thing is that others... Uh, might, I might be carrying that virus and not knowing anything about it. So I have to be thinking of other people. So that's why I obey. But God, I'm, I am not in fear. I am not in anxiety. And that reminds me of, verse, of a verse in Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. You know those verses. This is just a review for you, I know. And the peace of God, which passes, surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Because even in, you know, your friends or your relatives that, that we're praying for, they don't have the peace that you have, and yet you, we we love them and we honor them. They're taking care of us, making sure because we're in our 80s now and thinking, well, we're vulnerable, vulnerable. We know we are now. We got the blood of Jesus, so Jesus rules in this temple. He rules in your temple, set above those things. But then I want to uh, uh, just take you back a history. Now, in Deuteronomy, you know, God's plan was always to take care of his people. Remember when they traveled through the wilderness? He covered them by a cloud by day and the fire by night. He provided manna, water from the rock, healing when they looked at the serpent on the pole. There was, and there was not one feeble one among them. Remember that? That's how we could go and live in the jungle. We thought, oh, God, we'll take some erythromycin. And we'll take some, oh, some other things. Some, uh, what I, I can't remember, uh, to build our immune system. And we were fine. We did get little infections. But anyway, God is good. God is good. Not one feeble one among them. So I'm saying we have that authority over sickness. We have that authority over the, the well, God has the silver and the gold. And if we've given into his kingdom, he's going to bless us. Don't be afraid of that. And, of course, we need to give into his kingdom. Uh, you need to tithe. You need to give. And um, uh, ask him, where are we supposed to give? Where? where we want to give in good soil. And then another scripture. You've probably had this too, a lot. Uh, Psalm 91. But I want to go into some things I heard. I would highly recommend Sid Roth. Um, maybe you've seen that. If you haven't, it bears repeating. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I need to get political here because uh, we've been praying for our president. You need to pray for your president. For your leader there because that's what Timothy tells us to do. He said pray 
first of all, in those in authority over you that you can lead a peaceful life. So we've been praying for, oh, maybe even years now, and it doesn't seem to get any easier. It seems to get worse. Well, anyway, some of the prophets have seen, and this one, uh, James Gall, Gall, I guess was his name. Uh, I've seen him. I've read one of his books. So he is a seasoned a prophet. And he said he saw a book about the global warfare with the dragon. With a dragon. And so he said he even saw inside the book. And one of the chapters was about fear. Fear. You know, fear is pretty powerful. And that's what he would release, especially with this with this virus. It's the, uh, an endemic, pandemic. Of, you never know if you got it or when you're going to come down with it or where it is or whatever. Now, thank God, it's getting warmer here in California. But anyway, uh, you don't know where you can go. Sometimes uh, the police would follow you. I hear they follow you at a church and took your license plate number down. That is way too, that's, that's wrong. Should not be able to do that. But anyway, he saw the, uh, the book and he saw that the title was Global War Warfare with the Dragon. Dragon is one of the symbols of China. Now, we don't dislike the Chinese. We love them. We have very good Chinese friends. They have gone over to China. They've gone to Taiwan with their lives in danger. But they're safe. They come back. They do not fear. In fact, one of our friends works in the hospital. She's a nurse in the emergency room. We check with her every once in a while. She's fine. Oh, but they say, oh, these older people are vulnerable. Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I don't take that. Okay, and then, the, oh, okay, then, well, fear. Fear is one of the weapons that he wants to use. And the next one was that global pandemic. The, what country is it going to come? You can't go anywhere. And you, 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 we can't even hug our children or our grandkids. Oh, I waved out the window or we sat on the porch for a while and the wind came out. It got too cold. But then the next thing he wants to do is ruin our economy. And I'll say, I'm telling you this because you need to know, don't take up fear or anxiety. We can pray against this. We can pray against it. Not that we're going to spend all of our money and, and go out for the, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to going out to eat once uh, it's safe, once it's safe. But anyway, um, we need to be aware. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. That, that is a weapon that we have. We need to um, just submit ourselves. In fact, I got a new book recently it, by Carol Arnott, if you remember the, uh, uh, the revival that was in uh, Canada. Uh, Hello, Rose. Uh, I remember then she was there and her husband and thousands came to J Jesus there. Well, she's got a new book and I found it by the Sid Roth and it's all about soaking, soaking in the presence of God. And I thought, oh, that's hard. Oh, he said, um, let's see. He says, uh, come unto me and rest. Oh, and, and lay down your burdens and stuff. And I think, yeah, I, I do. And I, um, I'm listening and listening, and then sometimes I'll fall asleep. <laughs> Maybe I'm doing too much, and I need to set a special time to worship and just worship God and soak in his presence. So I recommend that book. You can find that. So anyway, um, let's see. Now back to this subject of uh, anxiety and fear. Um, uh, Jim Gall said something on his um, program. He said... He who teaches people to fear will rule. So that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to put fear on us. Or in uh, other words, he said, who, he who cultivates a spirit of fear will rule. So we need to be real careful what we say, don't we? Well, you know, we do want to be aware of the people that are dying and the statistics in our city and in California and other things, but we're not to be in fear. 
God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind, but we have authority over what goes through our mind, don't we? We cast down imaginations. Oh, I said, yeah, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And then, uh, let's see, this is called a great disruption is what, uh, well, Trump is a great disruptor, our president. He disrupts. <laughs> and sometimes he says some things you just say, ooh, I wish he didn't say that. We pray for him because uh, he's a person like us. We don't always say the right things, do we? Uh, but, um, uh, you know, he has a godly heritage, if you can find that on the Internet, too. His great ants, I think think um, uh, they were in the Hebrides and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they would pray. Let's see. Uh, he said, oh, this is what they used to pray. I found that out. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. He's to older what, great ants or something like that. And uh, Trump has their Bible. And there was a revival in the Hebrides. They were, God answered their prayer. So this is something we have time to do now, to pray and to rebuke the power of the enemy and speak God's word, declare that we are winning. We are winning. Okay, let's see what else. And we pray the word of God. Speak that, because you know, word, the word of God is powerful. What is that? Um, Isaiah fifty-seven nineteen. Uh, I create the praise of the lips to him who is far and him who is, him who is near. I, the Lord, create, and I will heal him. I think that was Isaiah fifty-seven nineteen. Interrupt me, honey, if I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, so hallelujah, we are winning. What else? Oh, I started out, you know, Psalm 91, don't you? I know that was, that was, everybody was doing that. And I think it's, it's good to just think about that. The first verse, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high, are you dwelling in the shelter or are you, you, you tossed and turn when you go to bed? Are you dwelling in the shelter of the most high? You will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And it goes on. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. Now you can imagine a refuge and a fortress, can't you? You can. Yes. Oh, that's another thing we need to do. Have this quiet time where we let our imagination go. I, what does God mean by that? Oh, my refuge in my fortress. This is David saying that in God. My God, he had to hide in the cave so often, didn't he? Oh, from Saul and then with his son Absalom. Oh, but Jesus is our refuge and our strength. So I'm going to declare, let's see. Oh, I want to go back. Psalm 91, verse 7. My husband loves this one. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. And then verse 14, Psalm 91, 14. Because he has loved me, I have loved him. I put my name in there. Therefore, I, this God, will deliver him. God says, I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, his word abides forever, dear one. So I'm going to declare over that over you right now, that you have authority over that virus. There is no anxiety, no fear in you. You have um, peace. You have a sound mind. Jesus said in the world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This is a test, but I believe it's developing. I'm praying that I have more perseverance now. I have more character. I have more love for others. I have more empathy, and I, 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 I learn to accept joyfully what's going on. And that um, this is all going to turn around for good. Oh, that's one of the things that said on uh, Jim Gall. Let's see that um, the church is, uh, uh, church is called to repent. 
I've done some of that, and the Lord showed me some things. Oh, boy, thank you. He delivered me. I'd forgotten all about those things. And when I, I asked him to show me some things, he started showing me. And I, <laughs> thank you, thank you, that he delivered me. Uh, let's see, they said, for this great awakening, repent, reset, recalibration, and realignment. Realignment. So he goes to the church first, and we, we have to repent. And the church can change the nation. There are some um, that are not even don't want to vote because they don't like our president. And I say he is for, he's not for same-sex marriage. He's not for abortion. He wants righteousness. He's, oh, if you heard his Easter message, oh, he, is, he is becoming more and more godly like you and I. We need to, but we need to pray for him. And he's doing the best he knows how. And he's going to, oh, he is God's man for this time. So I want to bless you. Pray for your nation. Pray for your president. And pray for the church. Don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid because what that wickedness is under our feet, but it starts here at home with us. And is there any leaven in my heart? Is there any uh, of this judgmental spirit, this pride, Lord Jesus? I want you to get all the glory, all the glory. So I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. And I declare that you are all healed that you have no fear, you have power, love, and a sound mind. There is no anxiety, and that the love is coming out, and you, the word is coming out of your mouth, and there is no virus that can stay on you because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives in us. He lives in us, and we always rejoice in him by the grace of God. We cast down imaginations. So I declare that you are healed, you have no fear, and that we're going to come through this like <laughs> with more glory, like gold, like Job would say, oh, she'll be, um, come out as gold. And I know that my Redeemer lives, and that what he said, and he, he is my advocate. He is our advocate because we all fail, but he's an ad advocate. So I bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, share this. I'd love to hear from you if you're from another country. Share this, especially pray for your nation and um, for our president and your family. We're getting clo a little closer to our family, aren't we? And praying for the loved ones that don't know Jesus. Yes, they're coming in. We're believing it by faith. We speak it by faith. So God bless you, dear friends. Thank you again for tuning in. God bless you. Let us know how you are doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.